Legendaries, uh, Season 2, Week 4. That's a really fun commercial. I Thanks know. again to Plantronics uh, and Giga for signing on for Season 2. I'm Frodo. I'm joined by Aguito once again to bring you guys the uh, lower bracket match of Group B between Domdus uh, and his opponent, Bunny Muffins, who lost in the previous round. Bro, we just saw that. a Shrekening. Holy moly. We did. You know, we, we saw um, basically Raynad. Uh, taking out all of his year and a half frustrations of not being able to I know. piece together a, a, a serious tournament run outside of Battle of the Best. And I took it all on top of this. It was just hilarious because, like, his facial expressions are just so pure. <laughs> like, he doesn't hold back. He's yeah. so honest, and he's just like, all right. Yeah, or, or like, you know, when, uh, for example, he's <laughs> in a stressful situation. Like, he didn't know if he had Leith or not. His yeah. eyes were just wide open. Yeah. Deer in a headlights look. And then he goes, it's awesome. <laughs> and then he just does it. Yeah. He's like, "All right, feels good." I'm sure it did feel good. Let's it, be honest. It, it's one of those things where he can't get too excited and ahead of himself because yeah. he just says, "Okay, if I win here, I'm just gonna lose here," or you know, "If I if I win, I'm just gonna lose in the finals." Oh, if I go to the finals, I'm just gonna lose in the first round. Like yeah. that kind of positivity. But he's playing well, and uh, you know, the most important thing is it kind of messes with Domus a little bit because that was the first time we've seen him play, and he just got completely annihilated. Yeah, I mean, Zero three. the thing about him, about Raynad, is that he, because he's so opinionated, uh, it makes it like the expectations will never be met. No matter how well or, or you know, how much he can do in a tournament, um, people just want or expect him to do more because of how opinionated he is. And he's just another, like, in my opinion, just top player that has a lot of theory crafting, has the capabilities of getting high up in tournaments. It's just, you know... Sometimes RNG gets to you. Sometimes better players get to you. It just happens, you know, all the different mind games that comes right, out. Well, you, you, you explain that to him, and uh, <laughs> I'll let you two stay at it. You know, I, I only can say so much, but a lot of truth in what you just said, Andre, for sure. If it, let's do a recap also in Group A. Uh, Maz is 2-0 through his group. Maz is playing excellently over his past few tournaments. Qualified for the WCA, uh, doing well in a lot of tournaments. Got second at IM Katowice. And now he's here through Group A in first place. Modern Leopard Luigi's will play tomorrow in the lower bracket. And, of course, uh, on this side, we're going to have two way play Raynad. The winner of that goes in first place in the group. And uh, the loser of that will face the winner of this one, Bunny Muffins versus Dom. This interesting to note that Bunny Muffins, um, he did a lot of work with Tempo Storm in the past, mm -hmm. uh, just writing and doing content pieces. And then he went to Gfinity and qualified for that event. Got placed also in the group with Raynad. But if he gets eliminated here, it's the same exact scenario. Oh, he, man. Bunny Muffins lost 0-2 in groups, and Raynad went 2-0 in groups, so they didn't play each other. So Raynad's just like the block right now for Bunny Muffins. Even though they've never played. It's like really funny that they're in the same group twice, but they're not playing each other. I and see. Bunny Muffins also got eliminated so fast. I think his total score was 1-6, or 0-6. Uh, he might be in that similar situation. So he's, a, he's a great player. He's he's the one that has to prove a lot right now. Like he, right. well, actually, both of these guys are in a very tough situation. Like if I'm Domdos at this point, I'm not feeling too great. I mean, I just got trounced. Um, you know, Buddy Muffins. It was at least a little bit closer, but right. you know, Domdos is um, he needs he needs a momentum swing like crazy because I am not feeling good at all being swept. The thing about uh, Domdos is that I don't think he even had an opportunity to really make many mistakes. I think it was just Raynad getting into a lot of good plays that set up for his strong draws. Okay. Do you think he recognizes something like that? I mean, is that something that people are it's easily hard. able to shrug off? <clears throat> because, you know, we talk about it at the very top, tilt shouldn't affect you, but, you know, even the best players in, in poker or Hearthstone, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. tilt is going to affect you. It, whether it goes from like 100% to 80% or 100% to 50%, it still is going to affect you. The funny thing is that I think he does feel that way. I think that's how the, every player defaults to. It's like, I played that perfectly. He drew well. Yeah. Like that's, that's the normal tilt <laughs> in terms of like, God, it's Hearthstone. Of course yeah. he has those four-card combination that I died to. Um, in that scenario, I think he's going to be fine. I think uh, he seems relatively uh, you know, mild in terms of his personality. It's not like he's super emotional compared to some of the players that we saw in the previous weeks. Sure. Bunny Muffins in the same time, um, one thing is that he's really young. And he tells me like he just got really, really nervous at Gfinity and he was playing uncharacteristically poor. So I I'm looking for Bunny Muffins to turn this around. He's got the Hunter versus the uh, the Paladin, which uh, can go both ways. Considering that this is mid-range Hunter, 
I would say this is one of the closer matches to 50-50 that we'll see all day, sort of just mirrors. Okay. Is it still the same uh, situation where, like, we have Hunter on the, the clock and they really need to push out damage and it's just um, Paladin basically trying to stay alive, get their heals up? Whatever yeah, it's, it's about the, the tension on the board. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. It's, you can always summarize it by saying, like, you know, who controls the state of the board and who draws well. But to, to get into the finer details of stuff, it's, um, you know, how do you build a board as a Paladin when your natural inclination is to build 1-1 one, one minions that just makes it stronger for Unleash the Hounds? Um, and then That's as true. it develops, like, how does Paladin convert their existing board into pressure points to win the game before Hunter has the ability to, to, to do enough damage with mm. kill commands and hero powers. Um, and that's where this early game start is really important, ultimately. Like, Bunny Muffins chooses to forego a turn two play, or sorry, a turn one play so that he can coin out this bow and control his day of the board. That's, that's how much they're both recognizing at the moment where it's important to just grab early board control and not let it go. Yeah, definitely so. This muster battle is gonna help out so much, of course. He does have the Quartermaster, in for in for his next or not next turn but the turn afterwards. Sure. It just depends whether or not he can keep these on yeah. the board. He's really hoping not for Huffer. Oh, oh that's really bad. Because uh you know now that he got Huffer, it just goes down to the minions. Yep. Do you Aldor here? Do you consider that? Just to mm. Um, reduce the damage, and that way you don't actually have to trade out your your one ones, and you can go for a quartermaster at turn five. Yeah, I mean, I even consider the peacekeeper because uh, it's just a three three on the bot on yeah, the board. Yeah, that too. Um, it doesn't really matter if the peacekeeper comes down and you're trading your health as much because uh, you know the fact is you're going to put out a really powerful quartermaster the next turn. I think I'd be slightly more in favor of uh, the Peacekeeper than just hero powering and Zombie Chow. Yeah, I think so. The Zombie Chow, because a lot of times you, you are racing your opponent no mm -hmm. matter what. You, like The best way to deal with this aggression is to put your own aggression on mm -hmm. and uh, force the Hunter somehow to actually trade out, which they never, ever, ever want to be doing. But at this point, I'll find out. Is there another play that we're missing? Um, Surely you wouldn't play like... I don't think you would big play big game once. I mean, you can if you're trying to play against Face Hunter, and you're really trying to race. But even then, it's just like a really weak play. All right, so he's gonna coin out and trade out the Huffer. Yeah, you you don't want to get Houndmastered and get punished too hard. Oh yeah. So this is the greedy play for the Quartermaster. So he evaluates that the Peacekeeper is gonna be really useful for things like the Unleash the Hounds. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, um. Uh, the Savannah High main. But even so, it's like, this is pretty greedy. All right. Mad Scientist will pop out. Because that's you know, one of them. Yeah, there it is. Okay. One thing one thing he did see, though, is that his opponent um, did end up using the coin, so he couldn't use Knife Juggler and Unleash the Hounds on turn five. Or that's turn true. four. And also, I mean, it kind of tells also that uh, he doesn't have right. a Unleash the Hounds, too. Mm -hmm. So it makes, I'm sure, Paladin feel a lot safer going into, like, these next turns to actually flood the board a little bit more. Uh, does he attack face here? Mm, he doesn't know if this is face hunter for sure, right? I mean, he, maybe he knows from the watching, like, the previous games that he wasn't playing, like, Bunny Muffins against uh, his opponent. But it's one of those things where you have to be really cautious. Because if it's explosive trap, then he misses an yeah, opportunity to cash in. Obviously. Yeah, definitely so. So now, uh, now he tests. Gets rid of the quartermaster, or he brings back to that back to the hand. It looked like you wanted to do that. Ordinarily, you, uh, yeah, quartermaster is much more useful back in the hand than yeah. the the three one, or the one one essentially. Still has to obviously deal with this threat in the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, most likely Aldor here. Yeah, the Peacekeeper seems to be the best for Tempo. He j attacks just to check. Freezing Trap it is. Sludge Belcher contests and he can push for damage. Uh, the Peacekeeper, what it does, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't protect your three mana minion. Is there a better target for the Peacekeeper? Because, like, it looks like he's saving it right now for something else. It could be that high main, of the course. High main, yeah. It could be the boom. The high main is definitely what you wanted because the boom you have the big game hunter for. So. Okay. 
You just bring the six to one. Naturally, yeah. There's the high main that gets dropped. He's going to trade out Belcher. Right. Seems all reasonable. I'm wondering if he's going to equality consecrate here. It's definitely like the main thing that he could do. He could even just go for a consecration. Right. Well, yeah, that's true. If but he wants to kill off the body of the high main, so he can equality and then mm -hmm. attack six the one two into the six one. Oh, and then consecrate out, afterwards. Yeah. But his board's not very strong afterwards either. Another alternative is to play Lotheb, Hero Power, and then 3-1 into the 5-2. So then um, so then uh, he has a 5-5. Five five. His opponent can't like get past that taunt easily. Mm -hmm. And then you can set up a better Quartermaster. He's going for that equality. Okay. I, I personally like it just because uh, you... That's like... This is where he tops out. And the only thing he can do after that is what? Dr. Boom, right? Or second high main. And he has kind of like the the ways to deal with that already. Mm -hmm. Of course, with the uh, the big game hunter, you yeah. just start coining out. He still has the weapon, which is actually really important to get rid of uh, one of the boom bots. Mm -hmm. There it is. Boom. Right, but now he's about to get more bad news that this is big game hunter load up time. Oh, yeah. Trades out. Everything looks good. Uh, I mean, I... Very clearly, it looks, it feels like um, Paladin is just maintaining right. or stopping the momentum. Really good control. Yeah. This is really strong control play. This is a lot of things where like Buddy Muff is just like a little bit upset because his opponent has all the answers. But it, there's a lot of room for Domdis uh, to sequence him properly here. He could have like thrown away a lot of cards, which would have been more useful um, in later scenarios. Mm -hmm. But um, this is the case where the plays seem straightforward because of how clean they are. But that's because we know both hands. Yeah. And Vermeeri is just going to basically maintain control. I don't really see any way for him to, um, yeah, to drop right. this. Just uh, just Quartermaster here is okay. You don't necessarily need to set up Truth. Uh, truth Over Champion is a lot of damage, but... Just push for the win, man. Like, know, you've right? done such a good job controlling the state of the board. It's completely 100% on your opponent to have it. This is what needs to happen. Bunny Muffins needs to... Hunter's Marked is 5-5. Five five. Yep. And... Uh, he needs a King Crush to come out from that. Uh... <laughs> oh, he's gonna go for the juggle first. Okay. Just trade in the five one, the one one first. Why wouldn't you? Oh, he wants to get the juggle off the, the animal companion. Yep. Okay, some kind of thing. Ah, uh, not yeah. King Crush, but close. Timberwolf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look! If King Crush is a nine mana eight eight, Timberwolf's a one mana one one. It's the it same kind of has a better it has a better ratio in terms of stats per mana cost okay. if you think about it. I mean, well, he needs an unleash. <laughs> yeah, he needs a lot to happen, man. How many times has this quartermaster been tossed back? By the way, he could toss it back. That's but, true. I mean, you can. Um, I think it's super safe to Aldor here. Aldor, True Silver. Um, or let's see, Aldor. You might even want to consecrate and trade. Right. The one thing that you do keep in the back of your mind is that you're at 13 HP. So you just want to leave nothing on the board in the event that yeah. your opponent draws quick shot and kill kids. Makes sense. Just trade out Dude, everything. These silver hand recruits, man, they're pulling in so much work, doing a good amount of damage. And uh, that should be the lethal push here. Unfortunately... Uh, Bunny Muffins is down for the count, so that means uh, game number one is going towards Domdis, and Bunny Muffins once again has got to find a way to pick up the hunter. Very cool, man. I mean, very clean overall. You you talked about it perfectly, where it was just uh, for us, it's easy to see everything because we know both hands. Mm -hmm. uh, but for them, I mean, there's a much wider range that they have to defend against. There's all these different things. It's very interesting to see the patience from that Aldor, too, because yeah. we, we talked about using the Aldor twice. He didn't play it all game. And he didn't play it at all, yeah. It was one of the things where he didn't need to, because uh, he had almost all the responses perfectly. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the things, too, there's no Lundish to Hounds, uh, for example, against the Paladin, even though he built his board. But even then, he was being really cautious not to build up too much mm -hmm. and getting greedy and overextending onto the board. Sure. Really good play from Dom this overall. Paladin uh, showing off why maybe he put it into his uh, into his lineup. Seems to be, like, okay. The way people always describe Paladin to me in the recent times is that it's like Druid, but better. Because it's, like, Druid was always known to be kind of weak against the field, like 45%. But because 
it doesn't really have any awful matchups, it can still win like a decent amount of the time. I see. And then Paladin's like that, but maybe slightly better win percentages across the board. Hmm. So they called it better Druid for a long time. Very interesting. Very interesting. So why did they why did it switch back? Like, what's the well uh, the, the people, paradigm shift? The, the big thing is that um, as much as Paladin can curve out into tempo really well, uh, it gets preyed on way 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 too easily by Grim Patron Warrior. Just like uh, and also Oil Rogue. So like the two dominant decks for a while were those classes yeah. and Face Hunter, and Face Hunter was also like really inconsistent for Paladin. So even though Paladin was good for about two months. Oil Rogue into Face Hunter into Grim Patron War, it just like shut out Paladin. I see. Even though there's great class, is it still a great class and very fun to, to use its emotes? <laughs> Naturally. I mean, why else would you use Paladin? I mean, too? I don't use. I That's my ringtone on my phone. It's, a, it's the thank you from Paladin. Thank you! <laughs> I mean, every time I, I visit Nathanius, he always says, well met. Every yeah, but everyone time. says well Everybody met. Everybody says well but met. But you got it. Once you listen to a thank you, you're going to realize how awesome it is. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hmm. All right. So uh, we got Haunted Creeper to start things off against Druid. He ha he threw away the Houndmaster, which is reasonable. He wants a better curve. But generally speaking, if you curve into a Houndmaster really well, it's like just you just totally uh, completely control the board for a long time. The big key is, just like how it always is, Freezing Trap throws a wrench into everything. Um, freezing Trap against Innervate is just such a huge swing in one way, it might just break the back of yeah, the Yeah, it's game. a delayed sap, right? Like, he can be able to deal with that very, very efficiently. Although, uh, is that kind of, well, it's not negated, but the Druid of the Claw definitely helps here, since you could just have it sit. Right. It can eat up six damage. That's fine. But I was saying before, like mm. Force of Nature, I love Force of Nature when I'm playing against um, the when Hunter. I, yeah, Hunter. Uh, of course, it comes a lot later, and it's very hard to actually say, like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to mulligan that because right. obviously it helps you none in the beginning stages. But, uh, but drawing for that into reason. It, yeah. And then you realize it's like a uh, stake trap, and you're like, oh, God. It's the worst, bro. <laughs> it's the worst. Really agonizing if he uses Innervate early on for the very reasons we mentioned. If his opponent has Freezing Trap. He's thinking about it though, right? Yeah. That's exactly why he's roping here. And just I feel pass. like it's okay because he could still um, keep his Innervate for the next turn and then. Or even like on turn three and then Pilot Shredder and then coin out a five drop. Like there's a lot more versatility in using it versus if you Innervate Pilot Shredder, that means you're going to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. You have to be aggressive. You uh -huh. have to hit the phase. Makes sense. All right, so there are a couple options. I mean, you talked about it, but Innervate into Pilot Shredder, Innervate Coin into Druid of the Claw. You can just go for the hero power or even uh, start drawing here. I know we talked about how uh, it's really important for Druid to actually get, like, a cycle uh, just so that they can get the right cards. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the important thing is that you have to line up the right removal. Like, if they have yeah. the Keeper of the Grove against the High Main, their win percentage jumps up by, like, 10%. Because wow. if you don't have an answer to the high main, there's just too much board pressure and stickiness that you'll just get um, out-muscled on the board, especially for its mana cost. Uh -huh. Now, this is where the Innervate we were talking about is really powerful. You can Innervate yeah. a 5 and then coin out a 5 and then play a 5. <laughs> yeah. And there, and the 5 drops are some of the most versatile uh, minions in here. You can see that some can be used for spell power draw, some can be used for aggression, defensiveness. It's pretty much how he evaluates the state of the game. If he... If Innervate's out the Drew the Claw, will he just get punished by a kill command? But then, does that really matter because he's using 3 out of 4 mana? Not really, so I think if you evaluate that, it's much better. Versus an Azure Drake, which might just get weaponed down and then you just start losing more board presence. Yeah, I think that's definitely the way to go. Uh, kind of an awkward spot here, I think, overall for, um, yeah. for, for Bunny Muffins. As he just doesn't have a clear way to, to clear that up, also. But like, there's a lot of tempo that exists right here. Mm -hmm. um, it still isn't like Ooh. in a place where he's out of time. That's a good draw. Yeah. The the swipe. Not now, but as the game develops, I think for now you still. Have the, I think you can play just the pilot shredder actually, because um, the pilot shredder is more resilient than the Drake, and right now you need board stickiness. Even though oh. you're really tempted because, like, the Drake's a draw, but your next yeah. turn was just going to be awkward, too. So you might as well save the Drake, uh, play a, a minion that has more resilience, and might even have higher impact, honestly. 
Is there? Would you consider ever wrathing here? Um, maybe because you can wrath really cleanly, but I would wrath if I didn't have um any of the minions. Like okay. if you say the Azure Drake That's and true. the Pilot Shredder had nothing else, wrath would have been pretty strong. See, a lot of the things about these is like the play is not bad; it's just not the best play. I see. Overall. Yeah, yeah. Now this is where freezing trap becomes insane. Oh my god, he has the eagle horn bow and he isolates it. <laughs> it's like, well, what do you actually do here if you're Druid if you don't have Kazan Mystic? It's like, I guess I'm going to toss back this pilot shredder yeah. or I just let it sit there for a long time. Such a rough spot. Uh, I don't know what the clear thing t to do here is, man. Probably just to Drake and pass. You know what's what's really funny is that um, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world if um, the pilot shredder stays on the board. Because sometimes in scenarios, a minion's frozen, it's absolutely 100% useless. Yeah. You know, you just you can't toss it back. Um, but a pilot shredder, in the very worst case scenario, you could wrath it. And then something comes out like a taunt that saves you. Other minions, oh. they just sit there frozen. You can't actually do anything. Yeah, with it. very interesting. I mean, it's I know it's, <laughs> it's like it's, very, it, it's very fringe scenario, yeah. but it's like in those cases because it's, it's sometimes just the lost. two two taunt. That's it, and uh, and Noyotron. Noyotron or um, the, some healing stuff. Oh, yeah, that's you know, true. like those kinds of things. At least Pilot Shredder gives you options. You know, explosive sheep, for example, and then you like dunk oh, your yeah. explosive sheep to do AOE. So like stuff like that. Um, or if if he is really good, say he can control his RNG, he should wrath his own uh, pilot shredder and then, I don't know, turn into Doomsayer. That's what you always <laughs> wish for, right? That'd be the dream, man. This, the beast, by the way. Yeah. That is hilarious. The beast is going to hit the face, and I am going to have my Jimmy's fully rustled. Oh, my God. What does he actually do here, man? Um, well, he could wrath, wrath swipe. It's not the worst thing, actually. Oh, you're right. Wrath Swipe. Uh, he still has a 3-3 three, three Finkel on the board. I think that's... It's not the worst, man. And do you trade out your pile of Shredder at that point? Or do you freeze it? It's I fine. Mean, we talked because, about it before. Um, or you can keep it and then let the Finkel actually... It might be time to actually coin out the Zombie Chow afterwards. Oh. Because if you coin out the Zombie Chow, then he's going to feel the incentive to trade in. And then um, you have the 3-3 three, three on board to also dictate that. Although, I can understand if he chose not to. Because then he if he did, then he could play something for 7 and then coin out scenarios on 8. And scenarios on the board is really good. But I, I'd like to coin out the zombie chow here. It does give uh, your opponent, though, another charge if he does go in. No, he's not going to attack. Right, right, right. You use the zombie chow to bait it because yeah. he wants to attack into it. So he has to choose between two tough decisions. Either use his weapon now to clear the board. Or to make sure that the um, to make sure that the uh, freezing trap does, or invest resources otherwise, and this is a lot of investment on both sides here. Wow. All right, he is going for the. Yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> at this stage, it's like there's two things as well. It's like, do I save my board, or do I invest into this weapon so that way I get more damage? Yeah, I think he has to go for face here, just because I mean he's depleted, right? Right. He's blowing all of his cards. It's so funny that people like really don't like Huffer if they're playing mid range hunter, but that's all they hope yeah. for at face hunter, right? <laughs> oh man, he's going for yeah. the Finkel now. It's fine. I mean, you're basically saying like either this Huffer gets to two attacks or I get my weapon two attacks, and I Huffer's see. more damage. Of course. That's oh, really wow. big, though. Gigantic. Now he can uh, really control his day of the board. And now it's going to be onto the point where uh, Dom just needs to pick up high main. Harrison Jones is not going to cut it. No. And even high main, it's like uh, Scenarius is coming down in two turns. It's a scary spot, man. And yeah. he also has a, a charged three drop, which does not help whatsoever. I think he just goes to her face here. Uh, I mean... I guess yeah. you can, yeah, it's using Chessman activated. I was like, thinking about the case for uh, kill commanding the the pilot shredder. And the more I think about it, the more the more I think it's actually okay. Because this Harrison is also an investment in damage, and you're just going to let it get traded in. It's very, very, very unlikely. Oh, oh my god! Wow! 
Wrong timing for that. <laughs> so brutal. That's so bad. And he's just going to kill Command the face yeah. and push. I don't think you have to kill Command. I think you can just hero power and push. Uh, do damage and pass. Yeah, because that way, like, it's going to be a small drop. Yeah. The next card, most likely. You can get that extra draw with Quick Shot. Uh, but he might not have a beast, by the way. It's true. So He might pick up Sludge Belcher, but I think... It's okay. I'm actually somewhat okay tossing in quick shot as well, but that's one of the things where you have to evaluate if it's worth it. Yeah. That is so unfortunate yeah. for Dom. This Buddy Buffin's kind of like laughing it off. But <laughs> I mean, he has scenarios. He right. has two taunts there, and he's gonna looks like just armor up a little bit. Dom, this has gotten some pretty awful RNG all day long. <laughs> um. Now, what's interesting is that it's still not like guaranteed. Double Savageor is so potent with uh, just three minions on board. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there anything that he can really draw into that's going to help? So he has... Second quick shot. Kill command and quick shot yeah. and hero power is seven damage. And he might just pick up the second quick shot and end the game. The dream, man. Oh, no, he, he doesn't He's have a beast. He's going for it. He doesn't have a beast. No, no, sorry, second oh, quick yeah, shot. Quick right shot. Uh, oh, wait, he doesn't have enough mana either. Wow. Hold on, hold on. Nine plus eight. That's that's lethal with yeah. two Savage Roars. And Buddy Muffin's going to get pushed out of the game regardless of all the pressure he put on. He was just a few points off. And uh, Domnus holds through. Look at that. <laughs> Not too swingy. I mean, there's a, a little bit of drama there with the... Um with the zero seven, yeah, the Doomsayer man, the Doomsayer was really big. Buddy Muffins looks crushed, dude. It's one of these things where this is his second tournament that he's qualified for in very recent time, and uh, not only has he been losing, but he's been losing pretty decisively <laughs> in a series. It's one of those things where, uh, you know, if he goes down zero three here, his overall tournament score is pretty low. It's but like again, it's not and, like he's misplaying terribly. You know, it. I I feel like. Uh, there's been some very unfortunate draws for him. Sure. Where he's just running into walls. Uh, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's, like, completely perfect. Yeah. But, you know, the Huffers forced him to be really aggressive instead yeah. of, like, you know, defensive. Misha is really problematic against Druid. And that was one of his best matchups. Like, that's partially why I think he's crushed. Hunter versus uh, the Druid is supposed to be, like, the best matchup for it. I think the only thing that's slightly better for mid-range Hunter might be might be like a, a, a anti-aggro control warrior, but even then, it's it's not by much. Druid is the deck that you're just supposed to punish really hard. I see. And he lost. Yeah. So. So brutal, man. That's, that's like, what's the good. win rate percentage you think for uh, for Hunter in that spot? Uh, you mean against Druid? Against Druid. It's probably like 65, 70 percent. I see. Like wow. really favored. That's brutal. I mean, it's still I mean a high percentage. Don't get me wrong, because uh, 65. I, I mean, two to one. That happens a lot of the times, but still, it's like. Well, the reason why we say chance. that is because you can't ever fully like he, Bunny Muffin's weakened his own win percentage. For example, he put Harrison Jones in it. You know, and his yeah. opponent um, just happened to draw like good enough to to answer it. Uh, but it's one of those things where. The cl like the most lopsided matchups in Hearthstone are like Freeze Mage versus Control Warrior, which is like ninety-five to five. <laughs> wow, somewhere around that. It's like, it's like if you actually win a Freeze Mage versus uh, the Warrior game, you should write that date in your journal <laughs> because like you are going to be interviewed by archaeologists and historians in the future of like what's it like to be one of like a hundred people to win a Freeze Mage versus <laughs> Control Warrior game. That's how rare it is. No, no, I feel you, but. There's nothing really close to that type of uh, one-sidedness, I think. It's interesting how that, well, both of them have kind of gone away, right? Right. Like, we haven't really seen either. I mean, we still see Freeze Mage uh, being tossed around Ooh. because Mech Mage still exists a little bit in the meta. I think the only other matchup that was equivocally close to those percentages was... Um, about six months ago, Shaman versus Priest, before Goblins versus Gnomes came out. 
Uh, just because there was almost nothing Shaman could do, and Priest had every single AOE clear, and they and like Shaman builds up his board naturally with hero power, mm -hmm. so Priest could just sit on his sit and just wait for things to happen, and then just kill it. It was really ridiculous. Anyways, uh, where we've digressed for quite some time, this looks to be like a good old control warrior coming out from Dom. This, and we didn't get to see this in his previous series because he got 3-0 swept by Reyna and chose to stick on Paladin twice. But uh, these are very important turns here. Shield block, shield slam is a really important combination. Yeah. But does he want to cycle deeper into his deck first? And he chooses to. And I think that's okay considering he does have execute. But this is where I start leaning towards, you know, warrior experts like Kit Kats, uh, Tides of Time, Show. Like, they're the ones who really understand and map out these matchups so much to the point where um, they're like, no, uh, that shield block was a misplay. Or, no, nope, that was absolutely correct. Really, really hard to interpret sometimes without playing the deck like 500,000 times. <laughs> Which is tough because, yeah, yeah. you know, basically, contr like, control is a day's worth of work, Andre. Just playing a couple games. I only played, like, the only uh, type of, of decks I played was Control Warrior, then Grim Patron Warrior, right. uh, Handlock. Like, every single control. That's all I, I enjoyed playing. <laughs> control Warrior is definitely for men, if there's anything I've learned. It, it was a tough time, bro. Yeah. It definitely was. I think, my, I, think I actively grew, like, an inch on my beard I after I finished playing <laughs> Control Warrior a few games. I know. You're really glad I said beard, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Sludge Belcher just to contest everything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying this? to figure up the follow-up for Warrior. No, I was kind of going off that. I mean, he does have a lot of very important cards like Shield Master at this point, but does he want to keep Shield Master for that turn s or the seven drop? Oh, 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 wow. oh, 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 oh man. I got to admit, man, Domdus has been getting some pretty tough beats. Oh, my God. That is so much damage. Okay, so now Bunny Muffins has all the reasons to start being aggressive against his opponent. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention that this. Um, oh. Oh my That's god, a like stampede Kodo. That's one of the best cards that you can have against Warrior. Like, yeah, yeah. if you put a Kodo in your deck, it's to destroy Warrior because you kill Acolytes and you kill uh, Armorsmiths. And yet, despite all of this, Dominus is up 2-0. That's, <laughs> that's wild to me, man. And this is kind of weird because like, you want to get rid of the Zappomatic at this point. Uh, yeah. But you don't have enough mana to really... Do and anything else. Use right? your yeah. I mean, you could 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 have considered just shielding up and then shield slamming, but sure. it's like, do I really want to use a shield slam for a Zapomatic at that point? It's so brutal, man. Animal companion seems okay. reasonable. Leox, not the worst. I think uh, Huffer would have been much worse. Oh yeah. He still can shield slam. I'm pretty sure this is a shield main shield slam play. You just need to get... Or, actually, Dr. Boom is also reasonable, too. I didn't see that in his hand. What do you like here? Uh, I'm playing, like, a knit here. I'm going shield uh, shield maiden, shield slam. Right, playing keep like, away. It's just... Uh, I'm so scared right now. I want to get my life total up. Uh, boom is good, but, like, I still have other things that can activate right. Boom a little bit easier. And getting, like, stuff on the board is a lot more important. So if I'm going... Thorazine, like in turn eight, and then also shielding up, that's completely reasonable to me. Uh, and then I have uh, an efficient way to play boom and other stuff. Even at like turn 10, I have like boom for six. I can throw down my Cruel Taskmaster and uh, go ahead and shield up or something. It's true. What if his opponent had six mana? So that was the turn to play the Savannah High main. He also had coins, so that was the turn to play uh, oh, yeah. that's Dr. True. Boom. I think this is the best middle of the road compromise, for sure. Mad scientist. Yeah, that is the freezing trap. By the way, the freezing trap in the hand of Bunny Muffins is unplayable, meaning the secret on the field is that. Oh, uh, it stinks to play the Kodo. Yeah. I I I personally think it's like one of those things where the Kodo needs to start doing damage. Yeah. And this is like the only time you'll have excess mana like this too. Right. That's too bad. It hurts, That's one of the man. best cards. I know. It hurts so much. Okay. All right. And the freezing trap means that Shield Maiden. I mean, it being brought back to your hand isn't the worst thing for Warrior. It's actually not too bad because five armor on your eight drops 
Yeah, you're um, absolutely correct. And it might not be an eight drop. It might be a seven drop. To be honest. Uh, yeah. Would you play? Would you follow to the Doctor Boom, or would you drop uh, one of the six drops instead of Thorson or Savannah's? There's a lot of merit on all, all of these options here. Thorson makes things so much cheaper and more efficient. Mm -hmm. um, the Silv like you're gaining six mana by doing it. Playing Sylvanas has a high impact on the board to steal something. So you can go Thorazin, armor up, uh, Shield Maiden armor up for your next turn too. Uh, and it just yeah, you're right. Cause feels it becomes seven so mana. so good, right? Yeah. Like you're getting nine more life throughout the two turns. Doctor Boom is also pretty impactful. Doctor Doom is impactful. Doctor Doom. So let's see People what don't does. know, but Greetorb's a really good Marvelous Capcom player. I'm not really good. I used to be he's, okay. He's a good player. I love the game. He actually beat Filipino champ. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin Wong. And Clockwork. 1v2. Yeah. <laughs> it was so easy, man. Uh, Thorsen is the best play because we know that there's Freezing Trap in the hand. So if Sylvanas came down, it's really difficult to um, to actually make her to impact. To activate her, yeah. This is like putting pressure onto their opponent. So this is a great choice by Dom this. You know, you could cruel Taskmaster. And then execute your own Sylvanas, Friday. Oh, <laughs> I haven't even thought about that Whoa. possibility. Nobody's thought of that. I'm, I'm proud of you, Retorp. You're caught up on all the memes in Hearthstone. Nice meme. Thanks, for Freezing Trap again, but it's like we said. Is he really sad about keeping Thorsten just sitting there? I don't think so, man. A lot of damage being yeah, tossed that is a out lot. here. But you have a lot of good value turns coming up here. I mean, you're going to gain... You could gain seven more life here. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, there's you like also might just execute. Like, you play Cool Taskmaster, execute, and Dr. Boom. <laughs> and armor yeah. up. Yeah. That's completely reasonable, too. I would have to imagine that this was also a backup plan in case uh, he played, like, a big minion like Dr. Boom himself. You play Cool Task, execute, Dr. Boom, armor up. You go up to 12 health. Realistically, what can your opponent do? He already used a kill command in a quick shot. Yeah. So he's going to have limited damage to kill you. But this is one of the better Four, matchups for the mid-range hunter. I mean, it, it still is like you're asking your opponent, do you have six damage in your hand? It, it, it gets scary very quickly. Uh, I don't mind this at all either. Real task. Well, yeah, the problem is also Dr. Boom sets up like... A stronger... Oh, he's going to go with the shield man instead. Okay, that's the really safe play, and I, I'm 100% behind it because his opponent has unleashed the hounds, and, right? Yeah. And honestly, keep the shield man... Or don't don't attack with Thorazine, and wait until <laughs> maybe you can get another round of your uh, shield man, man. Dr. Boom it's for five the mana seems a little unfair. <laughs> <laughs> How low is that going to go? I don't know. Uh, it's three damage per unleashed the hounds, so he's got three, yeah. four, six... Seven, nine. Uh, yeah, and then he could um, set up the explosive trap coin hero power. That's scary. Oh, he's going to quick shot immediately. Okay. I mean, he's getting his draw. It seems reasonable. He's getting the draw, but he's missing out. Oh, that's such a big draw. Uh, the Harrison against a weapon. Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe not that big of a deal, considering that his opponent... Um, it has doesn't have any weapons, yeah, at all. Ooh, I don't know, man. I don't know what the right play is here. Do we still get rid of the shield mate or bring back the shield mate? Start trading out the. I mean, you're really, you're trying to hang on. Yeah, I think bouncing the shield maiden is is all right here. Shield maining, uh, check out the cruel task, armor up. Right. You're getting seven. You're at twelve. You can remove three creatures, so they have four plus hero power on board. So it's six damage. Okay, it's not the worst. You have six health left. Yeah, I like that better than just armoring up and then cool task. I mean, he used both of like he used both of his unleashed hounds, so you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about boom anymore. But yeah. ideally, I think survival is the key here. All right, so denied once again by. Uh, the freezing trap. And he did uh, target the the haunted creeper. Just in case it was snake trap, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, makes sense. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. If it was snake trap, it would have uh, been the same result. Yep. 
So you want to kill off. You want to kill off this one one because if it's if it was, then you just uh, spawn only one spider. Okay. I was actually two. thinking of not doing it because um, it still has that extra right. point of damage after, on the field. No, you're right. But it's like he's not going to die to uh -huh. that anyways. The two damage versus three damage is the same either way. I see. All right. So threatened seven points of damage, a four-drop Dr. Boom. It's like such the dream. Wow. That complicates things. Yes. Although I do want to say that if his opponent draws into, I, wa I wanted to say Alex Straza, but I guess it doesn't matter. If his opponent drew Alex Straza, would he die? That's not the case. Oh. Something you have to always consider. Yeah. Man, the All hunter right. put it on the pressure. Can yeah, he man. withstand it? Oh my God! No way! That's crazy. Ferdinand, I think you're some sort of like sick genius savant right now. <laughs> Dude, you haven't even touched the surface. Some of the, the crazy the predictions calls, that I even just like threw out there for fun that end up happening, man. I've, I've had to, you know, throw my headset out a few times. <laughs> so if you Alex draws it yourself, because you can't kill him this turn, mm -hmm. can you? No. No. You can silence uh, the, the, high main? the high main, suicide the, uh, the shield maiden in, attack everything, and then... Yeah, and then basically win. Yeah. Because now you good. have a two mana Sylvanas, a three mana Dr. Boot. Oh my god. This is <laughs> that was ridiculous. Bunny Muffin's oh going to be so crushed. God. That's just like, uh, that's the nail in the coffin. What can you do? And this Harrison Jones is sitting so useless. There's no <laughs> weapons. Down this is clapping. Because he's going to day two. Unless Bunny Muffin pulls out a Deathwing. <laughs> High main pops out. Not going to be enough. Wow, so brutal, man. I cannot believe this. This board is going to get unreal so fast. But That's it funny really because, matter. like, who plays Owl in a, in a Warrior deck yeah. now? I mean, that's because it's anti-aggro, like mm -hmm. we're mentioning, and uh, it just happens to go long enough where the density of draws for the Warrior are just so high. I mean, it's if it was not Alex Straza, it was like, you know, Gromash or... Something like high impact, you know? But yeah. Alex Strauss was definitely the best. Man, this is the dream. He could get rid of his whole hand if he wanted to. Obviously, it wouldn't be the best. But he could play Boom, Sylvanas, and Armor Up and still have extra mana. Well, he could Sylvanas Brawl and steal the high mana. Oh, that's true. And, like, well, remove his opponent's any ability to do anything. But that's just, like, yeah, super yeah. extreme. Just play the Acolyte. Like, Ac choke your opponent out. Sure. I say you trade and then just play Dr. Boom. Yeah. Like completely choke your opponent out. Like, there's nothing really... You're not trying to race your opponent. And just keep armoring. Just make... Well, yep. you'll always have enough for armor. This is completely fine. Yeah, Man. Bunny Muffin's Bunny shaking Muffin. his yeah, head. Yeah, he is so, so sad. The only uh, caveat to this play is that, um, you know, everything becomes super weak to <laughs> explosive traps, so you're actually <laughs> not doing that much damage. But, um, hey, he's in such good position. I mean, there's a high chance by Muffins might concede in the next turn or two. Uh, I don't even think Dr. Boom will do anything, man. He shoves out Dr. Boom, and he's just going to trade Alex Straza. You know, like, basically right. everything that would die to your explosive trap. He's trying so hard not to tilt and, like, focus on the possibility <laughs> of winning the game. And I've seen the craziest Dr. Boom RNGs, but I don't even think that's going to pull him out here. I don't think so. I mean, he could... He's going to steal his Dr. Boom, right? Oh, yeah. Wait. Let me see. Uh, I guess he's just going to trade it in. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Use the uh, Accolade to draw a card. Man, it's just like he's suffocating him. Well, this is basically the point yeah. where he's just ground and pounding, right? And uh, Buddy Muffins is holding the head. And Herb Dean is still not doing anything as usual. Like, Herb stop the fight, Dean. man. It's over. And he's like, no, no, he's, he's got a chance. He's, he's holding his hand up. It's like, no, dude, it's over. All right. He's going to draw a lot of cards. I think the only thing that would completely seal away is an Armorsmith draw before this explosive trap. But, um, you know, I, why ask for the world when you already have, like, the entire ocean? Oh, he has Grimash, too. 
Yeah, that, that's lethal for next turn, yep. right? Because he's just going to be able to put too much damage on. And there's no weapons! Can you believe it? This entire game, Bunny Muffins has rage quit the Skype call, but I don't blame him, man. What a tough series to swallow, considering that Bunny Muffins had a lot of good RNG happen. Man. Yeah, that's like soul wrenching, man. Like, because he felt he was so close to winning that game. Right. He, he got, like, you know, the web spinner game Correct. of the Kodo. That's like one of the best tech cards you can ask for, short of a, a third high main. Yeah, everything was going perfect, and then, I mean, the Alcatraz. <laughs> The yeah, Alex draw was brutal, Comes uh, but more the... importantly, like, how everything panned out. Uh, and Bunny Muffins goes out 0-3 in the, in the group stages. And that's one of the tough things, too, because you watch these broadcasts, and you're like, wow, Bunny Muffins, he's not that great of a tournament player because he keeps getting eliminated. And I was like, well, he actually went through, like, a, a ton of qualifiers and hours played to get to this point, beating so many people. And then you get to the stage where you finally start getting uh, attention and, you know, tens of thousands of people are watching you, and you just get kind of, you know, embarrassed in a way. And that's just, yeah. that's not the way you want to be presented after all your hard investment of work. I mean, he still does get a consolation, of course, $200 going to all these guys that have been able to qualify for mm -hmm. the Legendary Series and, of course, invited. Uh, but still, I mean, he's not looking for that. He's looking for gold every single time. Sure. And just so brutal. It's, it's really heart-wrenching if you are... Bunny Muffin. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Like, you feel like you're so close, you're consistent, and you just cannot close it out. But the moment does belong to Domdus as uh, he has won 3 0, returning the favor that was just given to him by Reyna, which teaches us all important lessons that uh, that's why you don't bully people because then they bully others. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So let's take a look at the Redemption Tournament. Bunny Muffins will get another chance uh, in the seven player brackets next week. So that's right. All of his hard work. He'll still get one more opportunity. May 14th and 17th, best of five conquest format. All of the runner up second through eighth place throughout the four weeks will be making a return for a chance to win the season two land final spot. June 5th to 7th, land. Make sure to tune in. It's going to be broadcasted once again, twitch.tv slash ESL underscore Hearthstone. Thanks so much for uh, everyone who's been tuning in to watch. We have one more final match. We have the winner's match. It's Two Wet versus Raynad. That's going to be brought to you by. Tweet, Torp, and TJ. I'm done. It's been such a pleasure, buddy. Dan. And uh, we'll do some more tomorrow as well. Can't wait, man. All right. We're going to take a few minutes when we come back. More action here in week four of season two of the Legendary Series brought to you by